Hey guys, this is just a little fun video with some Stardew Valley do's and don'ts. This video will start off with some fun ones and we'll get more in depth as it goes on. So don't click off on this video and do leave a subscribe. Let's start off with the most important one. Don't rush. Take it slow. Play at your own pace. A comment someone left on my last video is, the game isn't going anywhere and rushing through the game causes burnout. And that is absolutely true. The most important thing is to have fun and you don't need to rush to get to the end game to have fun. So do take your time and have fun playing the game, especially on your first playthrough. Learning all of the mechanics in the game as you play the game is so rewarding and probably the best part of the entire game. The slow introduction of the new game mechanics as you progress through the community center is just excellent game design. Don't just upgrade your watering can at any random day, especially if you don't have any sprinklers. When you upgrade any tool in Stardew Valley, Clint will keep the tool for two entire days while he is busy working on the upgrades. This means that you will be unable to use the tool. If you have some crops that are not within the range of a sprinkler, then you will be unable to water them during this period. Do check your TV for what tomorrow's weather will be. If tomorrow will be raining, you can water your crops today and then give Clint your watering can to upgrade. That way, you can collect your watering can in two days and come back and water your crops with a brand new improved watering can. I won't lie, I actually did make this mistake before on one of my first playthroughs. Don't put any valuable fish in your fridge. I repeat, do not do this. There are many recipes that have any fish as a requirement. So. If you place a sturgeon, a midnight carp, or even a legendary fish in your fridge, and then you make maki or sashimi, you risk losing your valuable fish by accident. You should only use cheap fish for these kinds of recipes, like sardines or chubs. Do place a chest right next to your fridge with a bunch of valuable cooking ingredients. I usually have a few chests, a couple with ingredients and a couple with cooked food. Think of it as a pantry with ingredients. Yes, placing everything in your fridge is extremely convenient, but it's also risky, so rather play it safe. Don't cut your grass down until you buy a silo. And even worse, don't buy farm buildings and animals until you have a silo. This seems extremely obvious if you are not new to the game, but the getting started actually tasks you with getting a coop before a silo. So it's very easy to make this mistake. If you buy a coop and a chicken before you have a silo, you will be unable to feed them. If you cut grass on your farm, it will be wasted and not stored. Do buy a silo first, then a coop and then a barn. The order doesn't actually matter that much, but definitely buy a silo first. The silo only cost 100 gold, 100 stone, 10 clay and 5 copper bars. So you really can get it quite early into a new playthrough. And it just looks really cool. It really suits the farm vibe in my opinion. If you are adventuring in a skull cavern looking for iridium ore, don't leave early to try and make it back to your bed before 2am. The game has a mechanic where you cannot stay up past 2am. If you do, you will pass out from exhaustion and wake up in your bed with a bow. But don't worry about it, just keep on mining until you pass out. The bow you will receive will be a total of 10% of your total gold. Now that sounds insane, right? Well, there's actually a maximum of 1000 gold. When you think about it, 1000 gold is nothing if you can continue to mine, get deeper and potentially find some more iridium ore. So yeah, don't be afraid of mining until you actually pass out. It's kind of worth it. Of course, if you have a return scepter, you can just use that too. Don't ignore the townspeople. Yeah, this one hits way too close to home. 
because I actually am bad at remembering to actually make friends. But you should not ignore the townspeople. They have so much to offer. Also, don't forget that they do have birthdays. You can easily see if it's someone's birthday by looking at the calendar in front of your store. Or you can purchase your own calendar and place it right next to your bed, making it extremely easy to check the calendar every day when you wake up. Do make friends. Trust me, there is quite a bit of content that is only unlocked by getting to certain hearts with the townspeople, like Caroline for example. Once you reach two hearts with her, you will be able to craft tea trees. You also need to befriend Robin to six hearts to be able to craft the flute blocks. And those are needed to get all 130 golden walnuts. There are also a ton of cooking recipes that you can only unlock by making friends with the townspeople. And as an added bonus, you can marry someone and get a star job. Now, if that isn't worth it, then I don't know what is. Don't quit fishing if you are new. This is a strange one. When I started playing Stardew Valley back in 2017, on June the 11th in 2018, I finally had enough experience with the game to leave a review. And my review was 9 out of 10 just because of the difficult fishing. I just left the review when I played the game for a total of 41 hours. And that was because I pretty much did not fish. I actively avoided it because it was just so hard. I had done pretty much everything in the game and absolutely loved it. I have only left 4 reviews on Steam and Stardew Valley was one of them. But don't be me, you should fish. It's not that hard. The fishing minigame is actually incredibly fun once you get the hang of it. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the game now. All I had to do is uh, practice. And the developer did add a training fishing rod for new players who are struggling with the fishing minigame. If you did find it tough, just buy the training fishing rod. It only costs 25 gold. Then use it until you reach level 5 fishing. Then your fishing bar will be quite a bit bigger and hopefully you can catch those sturgeons, octopuses and even the legendaries. Just stick with it. It'll get easier and eventually you'll love it. I promise. This is another one that I am guilty of. But don't neglect your farm. Or don't only focus on optimizing your farm. It is very easy to just drop a chest in a random spot or lay down a row of machines in random places on your farm. I do it all of the time. And I even forget to repair fences or to remove debris on my farm. Instead, you should focus on how your farm looks. There is so much design potential in this game and you can really make an incredibly unique and amazing looking farm if you wanted to. And if you're too busy to focus on decorating and designing your farm, you could always wait and spend some time in winter redesigning your farm. Yes, there is plenty to do in winter, but you won't have any crops planted on your farm. So there is that extra bit of freedom moving things around if you want to. Don't ignore the arcade games in the Star Drop Saloon. Yeah, I know they're quite difficult, but they are incredibly fun. Just like the fishing minigame, it takes some practice to get used to them, but they really are fun. There are currently two arcade games, Journey of the Prairie King, which is an arcade shooter. It is pretty tough, but if you manage to beat the game, you will actually get the physical arcade machine to play it on your farm. Then you have the Junimo Kart arcade game. Junimo Kart actually has a ton of levels to play and is actually quite addictive once you get used to it. If you love tough platformers, then you will probably enjoy Junimo Kart. And it can be a little bit frustrating because it is quite tough, just like the Prairie King game. When you beat the game, you will get an arcade machine to place on your farm. Very cool. In Stardew Valley, your character runs around at quite a slow pace and after a while, you will kind of get used to it and won't notice it anymore. Well, you don't have to tolerate it. You can use coffee to increase your movement speed. You can also use spicy eel to further increase your movement speed. As an added bonus, coffee and spicy eel stack making you run around 
quite fast. But wait, there's more. You can build a stable at Robin's Carpentry Store and get a horse. Naturally, riding a horse is faster than running on foot. But for some reason, the speed boost from the coffee and spicy eel makes your horse run faster too. Do run around at max speed using a horse and a double speed buff. It's totally worth it. Don't even bring your axe with you to the skull cavern. Yeah, I know, that just sounds absolutely insane. But trust me, at level 8 combat, you will unlock explosive ammo. And you can use explosive ammo with your slingshot. It is considerably more effective at clearing rocks and ores in the mines. Meaning, you can find ladders much, much faster. And now, for the most important do on this list. Do play the game in any way you want and compile your own lists of do's and don'ts. At the end of the day, you might find other parts of the game more fun than other people. So I can't really tell you what you should and you shouldn't do because you should do everything that you find fun and not feel forced to fish if you don't enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do you have any of your own do's and don'ts? that I missed? If so, drop them in the comments below. It's always fun to read your comments. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hey, maybe follow me on Twitch too. The link is in the description below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.